Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finishing the Bible in One Year Project and we are on day 241. And this is the first official day of the book of Daniel. And we'll be reading Daniel chapter 1, 2, and 3 today. So, first day of Daniel. There's three days, I believe, of Daniel that we're going to be doing. Or maybe four Excuse me, four days of Daniel. And um, basically, a little backstory to Daniel. It's it's basically, we're going to find out, but it's basically right when Jerusalem was taken and um, Jerusalem was captured, destroyed, and lots of people were taken into Babylon. So that is where we're going to start. Daniel 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord, or Adonai, when it's a capital L, then lowercase o-r-d, it's Adonai. And Adonai gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Elohim, or God. God is Elohim, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his god, lowercase g, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his god. And king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring a certain of the children of Israel, and the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, at the end of thereof that they might stand before the king. And among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now Elohim had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your face as worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. At the end of the ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Milzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, Elohim gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had an understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel 2, verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep brake from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to shew the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. 
And spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac. O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certain that you would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. If ye, if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have pre prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king, and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asks such things of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. The decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, uh, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known unto Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. And they would desire mercies of the Elohim of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the Elohim of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Elohim forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons, he removeth kings and set up kings. He, he giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou Elohim, my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, Whose name was Belshazzar? Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret the king, which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is an Elohim in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, that thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter, and he that reveals secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like chaff in the summer, threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, and that, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. 
Thou, O King, art a King of kings, for the Elohim of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after these shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the potter's clay and part of the iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in, in of it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and the part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver and the gold, the great Elohim hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. And the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel, and said, Of a truth it is that your Elohim is an Elohim of gods, and a lord or Adonai of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and a chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested the king, requested the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits, and he set up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar the king set, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had stood up. Set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, all kinds of music, ye, sh ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall be the same hour be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Thereof at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. For at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast at the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that Elohim that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 
If it be so, our Elohim, who, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thereafter he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Wow. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of Elohim, the son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire first, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High Elohim, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Wow. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own Elohim. Therefore I make decree that every people, nation, and language which spake anything amiss against the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their house shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other Elohim that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow. That is just amazing. Their faith in God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their faith in God led to them not being touched. Not even a hair on their head was singed. And not even the smell of smoke was on them. Wow, that's just amazing to think about. Can you imagine them being tossed into that super strong high heat fire? Nothing, nothing. Just God completely covering them 100% in safety. Wow, that's just amazing. Not only that, but like it singed the ropes or the bindings on them, it's, it's said somewhere. As they were walking around so I mean doesn't necessarily say it, but they were walking around so obviously I mean, that's just amazing that is so amazing I mean that's just like God showing Nebuchadnezzar that yeah you are king right now but you are not greater than the Almighty God the one true God the creator of the universe so that was kind of like you know Showing Nebuchadnezzar who's boss, really. <laughs> That's just amazing. But it was also uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's faith and trust in God. The one true God. That's awesome. So, here is the daily promise. Second Peter 1, 5-8 And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. And here's the reflection, and I quote, My prayer, 
Gracious Lord, instill these moral principles in my heart. May these qualities be seen in me that others may know of your wonderful character. Make me fruitful and useful to your kingdom. For the only blessing that I seek is to see you using me daily. End quote. Wow, this is um, very, I mean different words, but this is very similar to, to the prayer that I usually pray um, at the end of these. I say, okay, so I always say that you know, pray that we can be an example to others and lead others to God for your sake and for glory. That's what I usually say in my prayer. So it's kind of similar to this, you know, lead others, help us be an example to others, right? So basically showing the qualities uh, of you through me. And I also ask him to, you know, use us and to, to, to use me and to show us his path for our lives. And um, yeah, use me daily, always asking the Lord to um, use us for his plan and purpose and let his will be done. So in a sense, it's similar to, to my prayer, which is pretty cool because, I mean, those are things we need to be praying. So, and, uh, and with that, we're going to end today with our normal prayer. Dear Lord, dear, dear Jehovah. Our Elohim, our Abba, thank you so much for today, and thank you that we're able to read your word, and pray you give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word of truth, and keep everything that we read in our hearts and our minds. Please speak to us through your word, speak to our hearts. Please help us be an example to others, and bring others to you for your sake and for your glory. Please use us, and show us your will for life, show us what you would do in our lives, and help us walk your path and your will. Thank you again for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. And I pray in Jesus Christ's holy, precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. So guys, that was a good start to Daniel. I can't wait to read more. Um, I mean, it just shows the awesomeness of God and to have faith in him. So I hope you guys have a good evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. And have faith in him, first and foremost. See you tomorrow with more Daniel. Bye-bye.